Hey guys, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. And today, I guess I'm going to be starting my rereading vlog because I asked if you guys would like to see my experiences with like rereading some of my favorite books at the end of this year. And the response was pretty much overwhelming with yes, which is great. So I thought I would update you that I'm actually listening to the Unhoneymooners audiobook right now and I'm on part six out of ten. I feel like this might be confirming the fact that this is my favorite book of 2019 maybe. Like, I don't know. I just love it so much and i can't really think of any like any other book that i've read this year that has made me so giddy and happy and like i keep giggling on like every single chapter but i'm also like my heart is so full like i just love and adore ethan and olive so much and i don't know dude i just i really really love this book like it's one of my favorite books of all time and rereading it is just giving me so much joy. So i feel like this was a really good one to start with because i kind of wanted to reread this one first I read this one in February this year, so it has been like a couple of months, you know? And so I wanted to like kind of revalidate the fact that I feel like, because I've been feeling like this is probably my favorite book that I've read this year, but I've just been wanting to like reread it and get back into it to make sure that like I still feel the same, you know? And I definitely still feel the same. I just love this book so much, and I feel like this is gonna be one that I'm gonna wanna reread and come back to all the time because it makes me so happy. And this audiobook is great. Like it's so good, and it's just as fun to read as that the physical book was to read. I'm just having a great time with this, so just thought I'd update you. Earlier today, I finally finished listening to the audiobook of The Unhoneymooners. This book was so freaking great to reread again, and I think I realized the thing that I love the most about this book and why this romance novel in particular just like really connects with me, and I think it's because I've always really loved the trope in a romance novel when they bring together like a really pessimistic personality with a very optimistic personality and like that's always one of my favorite things to read but I think I realized that in most romance novels it's always the female character that's the optimist and the male character that's the pessimist. I think I just realized like in the Unhoneymooners it's the girl that's like the pessimistic character and the guy that's more of like the optimistic character and I think like that's really why I love it so much because <laughs> I've always considered myself to be a more like pessimistic person and so I guess I just really like relate to Olive a whole lot in this book with the way that she like thinks that she has bad luck and she's always considered like a buzzkill and like a realist. People think she's like always bitter or like always in a negative attitude and whatever like I just really related to her for that and it's like I'm not a bitter person and like I'm not like negative a lot but it's like I do consider myself to be a pretty pessimistic person like I don't have a lot of optimism and hope about a lot of things you know and so it's just so refreshing to see a female character that I can relate to like that you know because I feel like it's always the female character that has to be all like bubbly and hopeful and like get the male protagonist to like see the light of day you know so I think that's why I really like the Unhoneymooners a lot and just because like not only does it have like my favorite trope of like the pessimist and the optimist but it also has my favorite trope of like hate to love romance and like oh my gosh dude like the banter between Olive and Ethan is like one of my favorite hate to love romances ever like they're just so freaking cute. The one thing I will say is kind of like strange about that book is how the epilogue is told from Ethan's point of view like it just completely like changes and like with the audiobook it was very like whoa because it was like a male voice at the end like i just don't know if that was necessary and it's like weird to read the epilogue from ethan's point of view because like you literally spend the entire book in olive's head but other than that it's just so so good and i honestly feel like it's probably my favorite book of the year which is crazy because it's been a while since like a romance novel has been my number one favorite book of the year and now I just checked out the audiobook for The Humans. So I think The Humans is going to be the next book I'm going to reread. How's it going? Um, it's December 8th now and I tried to get into The Humans audiobook. And <laughs> for some reason, I'm not like super loving the narrator's like voice in The Humans audiobook. I don't know. I'm just like not really feeling it as much. And I feel like The Humans would be a lot better of a reread for me if I read it physically. So I think I'm going to bail on the humans audiobook for now. And I just downloaded the Gone Girl audiobook for my library because I realized, you know, it's been almost six years since I first read Gone Girl because I read Gone Girl in January of 2014. And this is the book that like literally got me into reading. Like before I had read this book, I read maybe like 13 books in a year. And then after this book, I started reading like 100 books a year. Like this book is the book that I credit 
to getting me into reading in the first place. So I thought, how fun would it be to reread Gone Girl? I don't know why for some reason this book wasn't on my list of books that I intended to reread, but I think that's because it's a thriller and I always just thought, what's the point of rereading a thriller? Because of course I remember most of the plot and the plot twists and everything. God, I forgot how good the writing in this book is. Not only is the plot twist and the plot so interesting and these characters are so fascinating but just the writing itself is so freaking good i just read this one passage on page 72 where nick is having this inner dialogue and he says we were the first human beings who would never see anything for the first time we stare at the wonders of the world dull-eyed underwhelmed mona lisa the pyramids the empire state building jungle animals on attack ancient icebergs collapsing volcanoes erupting i can't recall a single amazing thing that i have f seen firsthand that i didn't immediately reference to a movie or a tv show a fucking commercial you know the awful sing song of the blase seen it i've literally seen it all and the worst thing the thing that makes me want to blow my brains out is that the Second-hand experience is always better. The image is always crisper, the view is keener, the camera angle and the soundtrack manipulate my emotions in a way that reality can't anymore. I don't know that we are actually human at this point. Those of us who are like most of us grew up with TV and movies and now the internet. If we are betrayed, we know the words to say. When a loved one dies, we know the words to say. If we want to play the stud or the smartass or the fool, we know the words to say. We are all working from the same dog-eared script. I freaking love that section so much because that's something I always think about too is like whenever you see something in real life it's almost like it's not as great as experiencing it secondhand or like seeing it on the internet or something because the internet always has like the better images or like it has like like he was saying like the music that goes with it to make you feel something and it's just different and it's just so crazy like oh my god both of these characters are just so clever and smart and funny and interesting to read about like they're super fucked up but god and amy's diary entries like oh this book is just so freaking good. Yeah, I am loving my reread of this so far and this was a really fun one to pick because it has been so long since I've first read this book and it's good to know that this book really holds up because I was wondering for a while, you know, since I since this was like one of the first books that got me into reading, I was like, I don't know, like is it going to live up? Also, isn't it so cool that I saved in my book my original movie tickets for when I saw Gone Girl when it came out in 2014? Like that is so funny. Like, dang, tickets used to be only $11, and, um, remember when they used to print them on these really, like, nice, hard papers? So, it is December 13th now, and I am on part 8 out of 15 in the Gone Girl audiobook. We still haven't gotten to, like, the big, big plot twist in Gone Girl yet, and I'm kind of surprised that it took this long into the book before that plot twist gets revealed because for some reason in my brain i remembered it being pretty early on in the story because then after the big plot twist there's so much like follow-up story that happens after that but i guess it still hasn't happened yet and i'm on part 8 out of 15 so i'm about like halfway a little bit more than halfway through it and oh my god i am just loving it so freaking much like i can feel like we're building the suspense like i literally feel like the big plot twist in this book is gonna happen like any second now like it's really really good i really i forgot in this book that um amy's job like her old job was to write personality tests or personality quizzes or whatever for this magazine or something in new york and then she got let go of that job because now like every website can give you tests for free or quizzes for free so she doesn't have a job anymore but i love how in her diary entries she has like quizzes like within her diary entries like Nick is acting this way, like, what would I do as a wife? I could do this, A, I could do this, B, or this, C. And like, she's like, and obviously I should react this way, but she wants to react a different way. And how she's always like over analyzing how she reacts to things because her parents are both psychologists. And it's like, how fucked up of them to write this amazing Amy series and create this like fictional Amy that she can never live up to. And it's like, her parents are psychologists. Like, don't they? realize like aren't they aware of how awful that must be for her and like how traumatizing that must be that she can never live up to this like fictional version of herself that they created of her and like wow i'm just blown away like i just love this book so much like for some reason in my mind i always like thought that the reason why i loved this book so much was because of the plot twist and how freaking mind-blowing and great it is and really like the first of its kind and like i do love this book for all of those reasons but like 
it's also so cleverly written and so smart and this book really like knows these characters so well you know like it really knows their personality traits and like what makes them tick and i just really love reading about this marriage that starts to like go wrong and you're trying to figure out who's telling the truth and oh my god it's just so good text copyright 2012 by gillian flynn what's up ladies and gents it is december 18th now and donald trump just got impeached so it's a great day and i have finally finished my reread of gone girl so crazy i was going through some like recent photos and i found this picture of myself when i was first reading gone girl in 2014 and i was like wow little did that bitch know that her whole life was gonna change after i read gone girl because this is the book that legit got me into reading and it's so crazy but anyways I kind of wanted to talk about some like spoilery things about this book because I've never had a chance to do that really on this channel and so I'm gonna put a giant like spoilers over my face while I'm talking about spoilers so if you want to skip ahead if you don't want to hear spoilers about this book then you can go ahead and skip ahead but um I just I just really need to jump into some spoilers about this book because I need to talk about this. The ending of this book is so crazy and I didn't realize how late in the book we get that plot twist of like Amy's point of view in like the present day finally. Like it doesn't happen until pretty late in the book. God, her little like cool girl monologue is literally my favorite freaking thing in the world. Men always say that as the defining compliment, don't they? She's a cool girl. Being the cool girl means I am a hot, brilliant, funny woman who adores football, poker, dirty jokes, and burping, who plays video games, drinks cheap beer, loves threesomes and anal sex, and jams hot dogs and hamburgers into her mouth like she's hosting the world's biggest culinary gangbang while somehow maintaining a size two because cool girls are above all hot. Hot and understanding. Cool girls never get angry. They only smile in a chagrined, loving manner and let their men do whatever they want. Go ahead, shit on me. I don't mind i'm a cool girl men actually think that this girl exists <laughs> and i love the fact that she says like some girls like pretend to be the cool girls so that they can be appealing to men and how gross that is because it's like you're literally not even being who you are you're only this figment of their imagination just to impress them which is gross i don't know just that whole spiel about the cool girl thing was just freaking amazing and like one of the best like monologue things that I've ever read in my life. But also, can we just talk about this ending? Because my mind was so blown by this ending. Like, I'm still kind of surprised over the fact that Amy does like change her mind about what she originally intended to do because I just have trouble believing that she would hate Nick for so long and do all of this shit to him. And then like within about a month, like completely have a change of heart and like want to go back and be with him again. You know, like that's just really surprising to me. But her character is just so fascinating to read about. I mean, Jesus, I totally forgot that part at the end of this book where she actually takes his semen from him and uses it to get pregnant like behind his back and then they're like trapped together. And the way that she knows him so well that like she knows that he would be bored with any other girl because of how much she enriches his life and like makes him crazy you know like he, she she knows that he wants that craziness and he really desires it even though he doesn't admit to wanting it i love in nick's final chapter in this book how it kind of mirrors the beginning of this book when he's like the other morning i woke up next to her and i studied the back of her skull i tried to read her thoughts for once i didn't feel like i was staring into the sun i'm rising to my wife's level of madness because i can feel her changing me again i was a callow boy and then a man good and bad now at last i'm the hero i am the one to root for in the never-ending war story of our marriage it's a story i can live with hell at this point i can't imagine my story without amy she is my forever antagonist we are one long frightening climax i love that i love the way that he says that like that quote we are one long frightening climax like that is a really great way to describe these characters because they're so fucking crazy and then i love amy's final chapter at the end she says she says like nick doesn't have it down perfect of being like the perfect husband that she wants him to be and i find it pretty fascinating how she basically says that she wanted to come back just to train him to be like the perfect husband you know she says my gosh nick why are you so wonderful to me and he's supposed to say, you deserve it, I love you. But he said, because I feel sorry for you. Why? Because every morning you have to wake up and be you. And then she's like, I truly wish he hadn't said that. I keep thinking about it, I can't stop. And then she just ends the book with, I don't have anything else to add. I just wanted to make sure that I had the last word. I think I've earned that. And like, that's such an Amy 
thing to like want to have the last word and like want to be the last one to say something and the way that this book just kind of leaves off with hinting like she's probably gonna kill Nick now like that was the freaking blow that she like needed like that was a really low blow for her so she's like pissed now and it's like Amy is like the one person you do not want to piss off because holy shit anyways Gone Girl is incredible and that book is just amazing it's just one of the best written thrillers ever and I just think it's so great and I just love when when an author can like truly understand their characters so well. It's just fascinating. So this was an easy five out of five. I really enjoyed rereading this and the audiobook for this was really great. Like I thought it was awesome. So the next book I have decided to reread is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. I actually just took a bath and I just started rereading it right now and I'm only 30 pages in but I'm already getting back into the like atmosphere and mood of this book and I'm just already loving it again so I'm just gonna spend the rest of this night reading this book. It is December 19th and last night I actually read 130 pages of The Simple Wild and once again I'm just loving this book so much already and <laughs> I forgot how much I hate Jonah at the beginning of this book like oh my god he's driving me nuts but yeah like Jonah is so freaking annoying like if Kala wants to wear makeup all over her face and order soy lattes then like let the bitch order a soy latte like you don't need to be a dick about it i don't know jonah's just kind of driving me nuts but i remember at the beginning of this book the first time i read it too jonah was driving me freaking nuts and i thought i was gonna hate the book because of it so i know it does eventually turn around but like <sighs> i am at work right now and i'm reading the simple wild because it's so slow and i'm the only one here right now but i'm off the clock because it's so slow and there's nothing to do i just got to this part that had this plot twist that I totally forgot about for some reason like I totally forgot that this book even mentioned this plot twist so I don't know how I forgot about this but I'm like whoa so really loving this book and yeah hopefully I can get through a good chunk of this if it stays this slow here oh my gosh 11 30 at night right now and I did get the chance to read a little bit I got to page 162 while I was at work so I only ended up reading like 30 ish pages at work but it was a pretty long day at work and there was some unexpected things that happened today at work so I had to stay a little bit longer than I was initially planning so I ended up working about like 10 and a half hours or so today just months the human mom stopped always saying Sylvie come back she never did meanwhile Amy had to put in her coat Amy could not leave without a warm little bite in her stomach hello it is Friday night and it is about seven o'clock and today was an incredibly long day at work like it was a really shitty day and it was one of those days where it's like the sky is falling and everything that could go wrong is going wrong and I just feel like shitty all day and then on top of a shitty day I had this psycho Republican lady like messaging me in my DMs after I posted that thing about celebrating Trump's impeachment and she was telling me to educate myself and take my braces off and get a real job and she called me a snowflake which that's just like the cherry on top of this like shitty day but I didn't actually mind the snowflake part because I am a damn snowflake. I'm special and unique. <laughs> it's so like weird to me, honestly, when people like message things like that because it's like you have so much hate in your heart that you're like messaging hatred towards other people like it's just so weird anyways i don't usually i don't usually care about hate comments honestly but that one i was just like where's the logic anyways so last night i didn't get a chance to update you but i did end up reading the simple wild last night and i got to chapter 18 page 256 so i'm getting through this i only have that tiny little bit left so um yeah i guess my plan for now is just to kind of chill on the couch and read some more of this hopefully maybe finish it tonight i don't really know i mean i work in the morning but i don't really have any plans for the rest of the night so i'm gonna start reading it a little bit now and then i'm probably gonna make dinner a little bit when my sister gets home in about an hour and then maybe read some more later i don't know we'll see <laughs> i just finished reading the simple wild and I cried a lot. I just love her dad so much. I love that all of these characters are like so fleshed out, you know? Like I really feel like 
I know all of these characters in this book. I didn't even realize the first time I read this that this totally does end on kind of like a cliffhanger. Like you don't really know what's going on at the end there. So like I'm totally stoked that there is going to be a sequel. Like what the heck? Like when I first heard about the sequel, I was like, wow, that's weird because I thought it ended. Like I remembered it ending like, like well, like I thought there wouldn't be a need for a sequel. But now that I just finished it again, I'm like, yeah, there's definitely potential for a sequel there. Dude, Kala's dad is so precious and like the romance that exists still between Kala's dad and Kala's mom is like so sad and so precious and like they never really got their chance, you know, because they just didn't want to be in the same place. It was really good. It was really good. You know, I do think though that this time around Jonah did bug me a little bit more because I didn't like his Barbie nickname for her that was starting to drive me nuts in the book but other than that i mean <laughs> i don't know why i forgot about the whole like suitcases thing honestly after rereading this i was kind of like yeah that is a total dick move like that, that is really annoying so i mean jonah definitely was a little bit more annoying this time around but i still really like adore him and i think he's really soft and sweet on the inside it was a 5 out of 5 and I just really really love this book. I love the atmosphere of Alaska in this book. It's just so great and I love that Jonah's a pilot and I just love like Kala in this book. Like I don't know why I just really enjoy reading from her point of view. I'm gonna go to bed because I'm tired of crying. <laughs> Hello again. It is the night of December 23rd and I think I'm gonna start my reread of We Are the Ants because I think this book might be the last book that I have time to reread. I don't really know yet, but I wanted to start rereading this one though tonight because I definitely wanted to make this one a priority to reread. And since it's like right before Christmas right now, like it's literally, I mean, it's past midnight, so it is technically Christmas Eve right now. I thought this would be the best Christmas gift to myself, you know, like rereading a favorite book of all time and a book that I consider to be my all-time favorite. Like, I just really want to revalidate the fact that this is my all-time favorite book. Tomorrow night for Christmas Eve, I'm staying the night at my parents' house, so hopefully I can read some more of this tomorrow night. This will be my next reread, and I'm very excited about it, and also kind of nervous just because, yeah, I haven't read this book since 2016, and I'm just really hoping it lives up to the hype that I've created for it. Like, I love this book so much. Gosh, I found this We Are the Ants book playlist, that I made the first time that I read this book so I think it would be super fun to play this playlist again and re-listen to these songs as I'm reading it. I feel like that would really take me back. Okay, look at this book giving me Joker vibes on the first page, trying to decide if the end of existence is a tragedy, a comedy, or an inconsequential as that Camelab I forgot to turn in last week. Like. I always thought my life was a tragedy, but now I realized it's a fucking comedy. Oh my gosh. This is already so freaking good and I'm only on page two. Eve and last night I stayed up until like 2 15 in the morning reading where the ants and I got to page 173 just last night which is crazy because like I was not expecting to like <laughs> stay up late reading and read that much in one sitting but it was really hard to put down unsurprisingly <laughs> I really love the book playlist that I made for this book because I've been reading- I've been listening to it again as I'm reading the book again and it honestly is sending me back to like the first time that I read this because I had created this playlist when I was first reading this book and then I listened to that playlist non-stop while I was reading this book for the first time and so now 
rereading it and listening to the playlist is literally sending me back and I feel like I'm getting all those same emotions that I got the first time that I read this book. I just really love Henry's character and I feel so bad for him and like all of his like situations that he's dealing with in his life but I also like love the way that this book is written like all the quotes about like gravity and the universe and the way he's talking about how nothing's really gonna matter because we're only here for so long and our lives are so insignificant and god it's just written so beautifully and Diego is so freaking precious like I love him so much and yeah this book is just giving me all the warm and fuzzy feelings and I just I'm just loving it so much. Like, I don't know why I ever doubted my love for this book. <laughs> it is December 25th, and it is now nighttime, and I'm back home. It's actually like 12.30 in the morning right now, and I just made some oatmeal because I was kind of hungry and cold, and so oatmeal just sounded like a great idea. I actually did not get the chance to reread anything of We Are the Ants yesterday because I actually ended up staying up kind of late with my mom last night on Christmas Eve and we didn't go to bed until about like 1 a.m. So I wasn't going to read last night. And then today I just ended up spending the whole day with my family. Like we were playing games all day and it was just a whole lot of fun. So I didn't end up reading anything this morning. So I haven't actually read anything since I last updated you, but I wanted to update that now I am going to read because I just finished editing my book postscript video, which is supposed to go up tomorrow. And so I have to wait for that to finish editing tonight so that I can upload it to go up in the morning. And so that has about like 45 minutes left to render. So I think I'm going to start jumping back into this book to read a little bit. And then tomorrow I only work a 10 to 4 shift. So I think tomorrow night I'm going to come home from work and then try to finish We Are The Ants. Also, look at how crazy my mom got me these new like reading lights. And they have like two of them and you turn them on like that they're so bright and it's awesome because since there's two of them it really like lights up the whole page so you can like actually read at night using these so i kind of want to test these out tonight too and then also in the mail today i got mr nobody by katherine sedman and this is a thriller that goes on sale in january that i'm really looking forward to i got a book on christmas from penguin random house like how great is that Next morning, December 26th, I just got a bagel from Starbucks. Yeah, I guess I just wanted to update you that last night, I read up to page like 250 something of We Are the Ants. Almost 100 pages last night, like about 80-ish pages or so. So I made some good progress last night. Just cream cheese in my bagel real fast before I go to work. Something that I forgot about in the book is that I forget that like there's little mini chapters of Henry like predicting how the world is gonna end like I totally forgot that that was even a thing in the book And so I'm kind of like skimming those chapters like I don't like absolutely love those chapters But they're like so short that it's like it doesn't even really matter But I'm loving it so much like there's so much about Diego's character that I had forgotten about For some reason because when I think back on we are the ants I just think about how much I love and relate to like Henry's character a lot But for some reason I just forgot how like amazing Diego is. It is now nighttime. It is like 11.50 at night right now and I haven't read anything of We Are the Ants today but I'm planning on starting now. I'm on page 259 and if I don't finish it for whatever reason tonight then I do also have tomorrow off of work but I am planning on trying to finish it tonight even though I do have a pretty thick amount of it left but I am determined. I would have, like, I wanted to read some tonight because I got off of work at 4 today, but I just ended up editing these two YouTube videos that I want to go up tomorrow and then the next day, and I was rendering those, and then I ended up watching three episodes of the second season of You, which is actually pretty good. Like, I, I'm not gonna lie, the first season, I liked the beginning of the first season, but then by the end of it, I just thought it was, like, really cheesy and I wasn't a huge fan of it. But I feel like now because it's a Netflix show instead of a Lifetime show, I feel like it's just a little better this season. And I love the actors 
on this season like the girl from the haunting of hill house is in it and yeah so i mean anyways that's not what this vlog is about but i'm gonna jump back into we are the ants and hopefully finish it that is the plan really good i will say this time around i do feel like the book started to drag a little bit in the middle like there was just a lot of repetitive scenes of like henry getting bullied and henry talking about how much he misses jesse and things like that that i didn't mind so much the first time i read it because i was enjoying the rest of the story so much but this time around it was definitely something that I noticed. God, I just, I love the writing of this book so much. I love the way that he compares everything, like, about his, like, mental illness to outer space. Like, I really love the comparison of, like, depression being, like, a black hole. And just a lot of the writing like that, like, the quotes and, like, the comparisons of, like, his mental health to, like, things in the universe is just really, really beautiful. And Diego is just like the softest thing ever. Like I just really love Diego's character. Yeah, I really loved it. I'm gonna go to bed now and I'll have some final thoughts for this vlog tomorrow. I still think this one's like a contender for one of my all-time favorite books, but I don't know if this one is my all-time favorite book, you know what I mean? Hello. It has been a couple of nights since I last finished We Are the Ants and this is going to be the end of my reread vlog because the end of the year has just come so quickly and I didn't realize that I was already going to have to get this video up so soon. So I haven't even started editing it yet and this is supposed to go up tomorrow so that's cool. That's real cool. But I just wanted a quick recap that I was able to reread four of my favorite books during this read- during- I was gonna say this readathon. It wasn't a readathon. It was just a reading vlog. I'm kind of bummed that I was only able to get to four rereads this month because I was really planning on doing a lot of rereading, but honestly, I've been putting so much of my free time into this channel this month. Like, I've literally had a video going up every day since December 13th, so I just really haven't had a whole lot of time to read, to be honest with you. But I was able to reread The Unhoneymooners, The Simple Wild, Gone Girl, and We Are the Ants, which, you know, I'm happy I finally got a chance to reread some of these because The Unhoneymooners and The Simple Wild are books that I just very recently read within the last year or so, but Gone Girl and We Are the Ants are books that I've been wanting to read for a really long time now. Like Gone Girl, as I said, it's been about six years. And We Are the Ants, I just kind of wanted to reconfirm that this is my favorite book of all time. And honestly, like after rereading this, I don't know if I'd still consider this like my number one favorite book of all time, but it's definitely still like an all time favorite for me. But as for my like all time favorite book, like I honestly don't even know how to answer that when people ask me that question. But my usual default answer is We Are The Ants and I don't mind saying that because I do really love this book and I think it's great. But but yeah, I had a really great experience rereading during this vlog. All of these books are still five star books for me. Like there weren't any like shockingly negative surprises reading these books. Like these books are all still my all time favorites. They're all still five stars. Which is good because like throughout this year, like some of my books that I have reread, I have been like disappointed by a little bit the second time. I'm glad that that was not the case for any of these four books here. I think this was really fun and I think this would be a really fun way to end the year every year, but God, December is just such a crazy month. Like it's always so busy. And so I never really get to read as much as I want to at the very end of the year, you know? Because there's just so much else going on, you know? And like, there's so many holidays and it's just crazy. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. And my last two videos for the end of the year are just going to be my December wrap up and then my stats video for the end of the year, which is like all the books I read in 2019, which will be very fun. So those will be up in the next two days. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys soon with a new video. Bye.